So what I would like to do is talk to you about composing music in the crowd, in the cloud. And I'm really happy that you, that you showed up. I had no idea. See, this is my first time that I've given this presentation. I had no idea what the reaction would be. Um, but I do know in the 60s and 70s, there were studies done uh, of correlation between um, people that were inclined to program computers and people that enjoy Baroque classical music. And so I had a suspicion that, um, that it would be a good uh, a, a session that would be of interest because lots of programmers also love music. And so I, I found that to be the case. So um, thank you for, for coming. My name is James Weaver, and uh, I'm actually a developer evangelist with Pivotal uh, Corporation, Pivotal Software. And um, you can uh, tweet me at JavaFExpert. And uh, my, there's my email, jweaver at pivotal.io. Also, I've got a couple of blogs. One is javafexpert.com. That's my technical blog. And then culturedear.com is my uh, musical expression blog. Um, kind of a, um, because in what I try to do vocationally, as you can tell, is kind of marry my interest in music with my interest in technology. Um, and so, uh, before I actually go into the application that I'll be demonstrating and then kind of showing you, I want to take a little bit of a high-level architecture view of it. And um, so, uh, by the way, this is, um, uh, the aspect ratio is very wide, and so there's only one person that I'm showing up here. He's going to look rather fat, you know, but other than that, and there's no like circles or spheres or anything that I have to worry about. So I apologize that it's a little wide, but anyway, um, the application is an HTML5 single page application, and then it talks to a couple of microservices in the cloud. This cloud happens to be um, at Pivotal Web Services. It's, a cloud it's in Cloud Foundry, and um, I'm showing the uh, the uh, URL there underneath that for the counterpoint service. Also, it uses a really cool uh, facility called NoteFlight. If you go to noteflight.com, um, it's, a, it's a way to do musical notation on the web, on, on, any, on any web device, any, any browser, on any device. And so I've chosen that because uh, they, have, they have an embedded version of this annotation, this music notation package that I'm using that in my application. So that's the architecture. Also, um, the source code for all of this, everything that you see is in GitHub. Now, there were two um, services, uh, microservices, counterpoint service and, counter and chord analyzer service. And I'll be getting into what the purpose of those are for. But if you look in GitHub, you can get all the code for both. So there are the URLs. Also, this presentation, you don't need to take any notes. You don't need to um, even, you know, um, like try to figure out where the slides are and that kind of thing because the technical presentation and the getting started presentation um, slides are actually part of the application. So if you go to the application, which is at counterpoint, composer.com and go to the help menu, there's getting started and technical presentation. And those, those are slide.com presentations. So it's all kind of easy to get to. Um, so uh, I'm going to switch over to the application itself. And I'll show you that menu, actually. There's the help and getting started. And we're going to go through those slides first. Oh, please, network, work well. Please work well. I've got a, I actually have a wired connection here. I assume that it's live. It's going to be a little slow for us, maybe, which is not a good thing. If it gets too slow, I'm going to pull out, uh, I'm, I'm just going to use my hotspot here. <laughs> I assumed that since I had a wired connection that it was going to be quick. 
You guys want to hear some more music? So. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so here's the. I apologize if everything goes slow. I, the the uh, the inner the even the wired internet connection looks very slow. So this is these are the uh, kind of the getting started slides for the application itself. So I'm going to walk you through those because they have a dual purpose. One is they make a great presentation. The other one they they help orient you to the application. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is what counterpoint is. This is a counterpoint composer. Um, the, the name of the session was Composing Music in the Cloud. Well, what kind of music? Well, I'm going to be uh, composing counterpoint music. So who knows what counterpoint music is? Show of hands. Okay, good. I've got my job cut out for me. Um, so here's an example of counterpoint music. Uh, who can read staff music? Who can read music on the staff? Oh, very good, very good, thank you. So you can tell then that there are four voices, four distinct voices. Um, it, may be, it might be four people singing or four instruments playing, and they're playing those melodies. So the top one, that's called the cantus firmus, that's the main melody. And you can tell that it's, it's rising and falling. It's got its own contour. And they're whole notes. They all uh, have a count of four. You can count to four, and that's how long they are. And then we've got uh, uh, two, uh, three more melodies. Now, the, the second melody is composed of quarter notes. And so there, for every whole note, there's four quarter notes. And you notice that it's got its own counter. It's got its own rhythm, and it's got its own contour. So notice among the four parts that each one has its own contour. They're rising and falling in pitch independently. They're also independent in rhythm, but they have some inter interdependence as well, and those are that they, they need to be interdependent harmonically. They need to sound good together when you play them at the same time. If you're familiar with intervals or uh, like um, harmonic intervals or chords, that those need to sound pleasing to the listener's ear. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to the application and play the example. So um, we'll get the keyboard out of the way and I'll just hit play here. So you notice that, um, that as it went through, even though there were four different voices that had different contours, different rhythms, it still sounded very pleasing to the ear. And it also had um, some characteristics, some sounds and melodies and, and um, uh, harmonies that are very characteristic of, of 18th century counterpoint. And um, some of those uh, characteristic things are are the harmonies themselves, and also kind of how it resolved at the end. So I'm going to play it again. I just kind of want to get it, uh, get you used to listening to. But listening to the end, how it feels like it resolves, and also um, at the end, you'll notice that there's a a note that is just one half step below what's called the tonic note, the the the, the note that it ends on. So watch this. So you heard that, da, da. So it kind of I had this characteristic of counterpoint ending. And so those, those things, and it turns out there are, there are you know, 70 rules or, or more of constructing proper counterpoint music. And I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, by the way, if you have any questions while we're going, this is, a, this is the first time I've given this. Um, and so... Uh, please ask questions because your questions will not only help inform the audience, but it will also give me guidance for the next time I do this so I can cover those things that you have questions about. So please, um, as we're going. I'm sorry. Okay, the question is, it's all open source? And the answer is yes, it's all open source. Yes, you can, you can, um, you can go to counterpoint.com and, uh, and just run it. And then... Um, 
and and then in the slides themselves when you do the help and uh, with the getting started and the, and the technical resources uh, the pointers like I just showed you there um, to the github repositories are all there uh, I've made it uh, Apache 2 so it's very liberal you can do anything you want to with it pretty much okay so we'll go to the next slide here in the getting started part of the deck um, that is a video that's going to be a video that does what I just did for you but when you're going through it independently you'll be able to do that yourself uh, using the video so this is this is really interesting to me because back in the 1700s there's this guy named Johann Joseph uh, his, his his last name is actually it's kind of awkward but it's uh, it's pronounced Fuchs as, as I'm pretty sure it's Fuchs um, <laughs> So anyway, uh, I'm sure that he took a lot of ribbing. I don't know whether that was a word back in the 1700s, but if it was, I'm sure the school kids uh, gave him a pretty hard time about that. But um, so he created, uh, you know, counterpoint was around during that time, but what he added to, uh, to the thing was uh, he wanted to be able to, uh, to take counterpoint and boil it down to different rules so that he could teach students how to do counterpoint. So he created this treatise, this book, called, um, I, I can never pronounce it, but uh, uh, Gradus Ad Parnasam, and, uh, but it, was, uh, it means steps to the gods or something like that, but it's, it's a very uh, methodical way of, and it's written in, um, in the view of a teacher guiding a student and the question so it's a very much a dialogue in which he very methodically goes through five different what he calls species of counterpoint that grow in complexity um, over those five species and at the end then uh, you know the the idea is that the student then could uh, could escape then the bounds of the uh, of the uh, the very structured pedagogical path that that has been uh, laid out and then do free counterpoint so at the end of that so there's five different species for that and uh, so composers like Haydn Mozart and Beethoven all were indirectly or directly students of Johann Fuchs so um, I, you're probably um, familiar with uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Um, I, who's heard of the, the melody? I, I call it Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Okay, all right, very good. So I think that actually Mozart, when he was three years old, um, he created it, but I think it was already around even when Mozart, but he kind of, he didn't know that he was only three, and so he he, had, he composed it. Um, so what I'm going to do, um, uh, in the session I also said I'm going to abuse a futuristic instrument, and so, yes? Maybe more people know Korjakian. Oh, what's it called? Korjakian. Kors, Kors, Korsjakian? Oh, nice. Very good. Well, there, there it is. There it is. So um, I'm going to use, if you'll indulge me, I'm going to uh, use my favorite instrument here, um, and play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and uh, just kind of use it um, for fun as part of the presentation. Um, I only have two USB ports and so uh, I have to sacrifice one of them here. Um, and there's a, there's a program called Logic Pro which has some synths and things like that. Maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll pick a flute here and uh, I'll play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star that, uh, I mean, it's just a really simple melody, so I can't mess it up too bad. Okay, there you go. So, just, well, nobody's gonna applause. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, I, I've got an also an applause thing here for, Also, for my funny for my funny bits, if nobody laughs, I'm gonna do. 
<laughs> That's kind of impressive. It actually makes you laugh, doesn't it? So, so, so yeah. So I brought my own fan club here. So, um, so anyway. Um, so that's Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. So now what I'd like to do, we'll unplug this for a second. I'd like to show you how to use the application then to write counterpoint for Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. So first of all, we go to the application and uh, I'm going to clear it. And we're going to wait on the internet. I'm turning the personal hotspot on. Yeah, much better. <laughs> Just use my use my own. Okay, so um, uh, so you you hit clear. That clears the score, and then. Um, you click the keyboard there, and then you click in the staff. That's very important because the staff then gets focus. And now we're going to enter not only the, the cantus firmus. Now, who remembers what the cantus firmus was? Raise your hand. Yes, what was the cantus firmus? The primary melody, that's right. So I'm going to enter the cantus firmus, but also remember that there, there can be uh, two or more parts. So I'm going to enter an initial chord that contains the number of parts that I want to be in my counterpoint melody. In this case, I'm going to keep it simple. Um, I'm going to make two parts. So um, I'm going to make the initial chord uh, um, an mm. E below middle C and the C. And then I'll keep playing twinkle, twinkle, little star. So that was the first note of twinkle, twinkle. So Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. So, what are the words to um, to the to, to the other version of it? Can can you repeat them? Are they are they clean? <laughs> are they about a star? <laughs> the star, no twinkling. Oh, okay. 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 Gotcha. Okay. I could play Turk's Fruit too, if you'd like. But uh, anyway, okay. So anyway, um, so here we go. Did I do that right? Yes. So you see we have an initial chord and then we have a melody. So now I'm going to hit compose and the counterpoint composer then is going to compute using that service, the counterpoint. So this, this, uh, uh, this um, microservice that's, that's, that's living in uh, Cloud Foundry somewhere. I'm not sure. It's at, in one of the Amazon. It's, it's actually the Pivotal Web Services uses as, uh, as part of it uh, AWS. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get, the, get rid of the keyboard. And I'm also going to uh, make this a little bit larger so that, um, yeah, okay. So now we'll play it. And, and you know something, I made a mistake, but it's kind of good that I made a mistake because I'm going to play it, but it's going to sound really bad. And the reason why it's going to be sound really bad is because, um, first of all, I used Dorian mode. If you know much about music, you know that there are several modes in music. Um, Dorian mode starts with D and ends with D. And, um, and so, but I, in my contest firmus, I start with C and end with C. So it's going to sound really funky. So this isn't part of the presentation. I'm just putting this in for free, okay? Now recognize the melody. Prostitute. How I wonder what rhymes with prostitute. I'm not sure. are very astute. Okay. Anyway, so I didn't mean to do that. I'm going to go with first species because we're going to start 
within the first species, but I'm going to go with Ionian mode. Ionian mode is C to C. So I'm going to compose again, and this time it should sound a little better. Now, first species is note on note, and typically it's a whole note, four counts on note. And I'm just using two voices, so we'll see what it sounds like. Notice the contours, but notice that it has you know, pleasing harmonies. Um, also, you, you may have noticed the, the little notes there, the little uh, um, notation D5, G5, A5, um, and, uh, and also I'm, I'm going to go back to one of the other things here, other scores here. You notice all those uh, like C major over E and you know, B major over, or G major over B, D5, those are all chords. So those are notations that a guitar player or other, other musicians might use to, to know what chords are being played so they could strum very easily uh, a chord. The, the, so the name of the chord is like G major, let's say, and then if there's a slash and a note, then that note is in the bass. So that's the lowest note of the chord. So it might be an F major chord, but the A is the lowest note that's being played. So that'll, that comes into play in, uh, in part of the presentation later. So that was, uh, um, that was doing the, the twinkle, twinkle little star thing. And this, Hi, this, this demo is, Jim Weaver. This demo is actually... And I'm going to demonstrate um, how you can use counterpoint for composer when you miss to me make twinkle, next twinkle, week or something. Little star you can always hear my voice explaining to you what I just First, explained to you. Counterpoint. But I'll, so now let's review the steps from the demo. So there is um, the twinkle cantus firmus. There it is. There's the initial chord. And then it's saying click the clear menu, um, click the piano icon, click the staff, very important, to give it focus. And then while pres for doing that initial chord, you want to hold the shift key down and then click the notes in the initial chord, then take the shift key up and then enter the rest of the contus firmus. And that's it. And then you will um, hit the compute button or the compose button, but you will do it in correctly. I did it incorrectly. Um, you will first select first species and then Ionian mode and then compose and then click the listen button. And so that's the, those are the steps um, that you go through and, and that I put in my help here. So to learn more about first species counterpoint, there's a couple of great resources. One, of course, is Wikipedia. And um, you could go here to Wikipedia, and it's got a pretty good write-up about counterpoint in general, and then also um, some rules for the different species. So here's some considerations for all the species, lots of rules and then first species in particular. Also, um, there's a great um, site called Open Music Theory, and they've got lots of resources on music theory, and it's, it's completely open, um, and one of them is how to compose first species counterpoint. So it's uh, some tips on if you were going to write, go through the same process, let's say, as the algorithms are, this is, as this program is, how you would do that. And so it, it goes through a kind of a case of doing that. So those are, I, I would recommend that you, you take a look at those resources. Also, for pointers on composing a, a cantus firmus, um, you can go to the Open Music Theory site, and there's a, there's a nice link there for the rules for, you know, for melodically creating a cantus firmus, the main melody. So now what I'd like to go do is, before getting into the, the second species, I'd like to go back to the technical slides, the technical help, 
and kind of go into uh, what's going on uh, from an architectural standpoint. So the top line you'll recognize is the Cantus firmus with the initial cord. And then we've got a, um, uh, a rest service, it's a microservice called counterpoint service that takes a, a, a JSON uh, stream and it's a, it's a post operation. And in the JSON stream, we've got a numerical representation, an array of ints that represents in the MIDI values, uh, which a MIDI is a standard for representing things like note pitches and um, uh, volumes, things like that. So the, the note pitches are, rec are, um, are represented by a number from zero to 127 which a, a range which you guys are all very familiar with. And so the main melody then is an array of, a JSON array of note pitches that is going to be sent to the web service. And then we also have the initial notes. Uh, so the initial notes then are 52, 60, and 69. Those are, uh, those are perhaps uh, uh, the note D and et cetera for saying what the initial chord is going to be. And then there's some other things that we pass it as well, like the mode, Dorian, Ionian, Mixol Mixolydian, things like that, as well as which species of counterpoint that we want. So those get sent. And what comes back then is an XML file that um, in this standard called music XML. The music XML represents uh, staff music and it represents so you it's got it's got elements in that they're like uh, the parts for the score um, measures notes that are in them and lots of other things and so it it returns then music XML that then the note flight embedded client uses then we it comes back as XML and then we load it into that embedded client and that's why it um, populates that. Now you may have noticed that even though when we entered the information in as quarter notes, um, when when the counterpoint composer, when this service actually uh, um, composed the counterpoint, it went ahead and uh, according to the species used the appropriate values of, for the notes, uh, like whole notes or or half notes, things like that, appropriate to the species. And so, um, and then the, like that G major down there in the blue box, how do we get the G major in the blue box? Well, what we do is for each measure then, in what comes back, we throw all of those notes into another microservice and we use a get for that, that notes equals G3, D4, B4. And then it's got an endpoint um, of analyze. And then it comes back with a JSON string, JSON stream that represents the chord or it analyzes the chord. So it says, based upon those notes that you just gave me, that's a G major chord. It's got a, e in, a, you know, a B in the bass. It's minor, it's major, whatever. And um, so then we can use that information then to, uh, to put that label into the score itself. So any questions on that so far? Yes. How, okay, the question is how does it show the correct chord or how does it know the correct chord? Okay, so, um, so there is a, uh, there's a library um, called uh, JFUG. Uh, you may, some of you may know of that library. It's a Java library, and uh, the author is, uh, his name is David Cole, and so I've worked with him on, um, uh, on adding that particular functionality into that library. And so following the rules of, uh, of, of, of chord analysis, it then takes the, the notes that were given to it. Uh, for example, if a C, E, and G are sent to it, then it's going to say, okay, that's a C major chord because 
you know, that's what a C major. I'm, I'm sorry, sir? Right, it can have multiple, uh, one chord, like, like a, a set of three or four notes, might have, uh, it could have like multiple chord types, correct? In different inversions. And so it takes what, we, what it deems to be the most common one. Yeah. Um, and it's far from perfect right now. It's just kind of in its first iteration first enough to be able to demonstrate. For example, you might be surprised to know that, um, uh, that it'll pick out diminished chords, but uh, f forgot to put augmented chords in there. So, you know, so that's, uh, that's version two of this, of this particular service. Other questions? Yes. That's a very good question. Why do we use different formats like JSON and XML? First of all, it makes, uh, it, makes it uh, a great way to demo how flexible the, uh, the infrastructure is that in this case, uh, you know, the Spring and Spring Boot uh, capabilities for being able to automatically parse and produce. But, um, but from a practical standpoint, it, it, it kind of worked out really well because uh, I prefer JSON. You know, I think most, most, you know, rational people prefer, I'm just, just kidding, don't want to get any religious wars here. Okay. Uh, but uh, a, lot of, a lot of people um, prefer JSON. Um, but, so that's why I sent things with JSON. But um, there is a standard called Music XML that already existed that lots of different um, notation packages already know. And so we went ahead and used that rather than, oh, I've only got five minutes left? Oh my gosh, where did the time go? I thought this was gonna be like really short. Okay, so uh, I need to move on, I'm sorry. Okay, so, um, wow, that was, uh, that was pretty harsh. Okay, so um, here we go, I've got five minutes. Okay, so a uh, second uh, species counterpoint, um, yeah, so that's, um, that's like this. Can you see that? Is it? So that, that's how you do it. It's quicker if I just show you the video, right? So, we, so now second species is typified by, by um, whole note in the cantus firmus and half notes one and so then you know you get the you get the idea then then there's several other variations um, and you can learn about um, third species third species is uh, is quarter notes now you saw a little bit of the quarter note thing um, so we, it gets uh, it gets kind of busy so we did the twinkle twinkle little star there Right. Okay, but I, I've only got three minutes now. I need, there's something that I really, really, really want to show you. Okay, so, so that's this. Um, and you can play with this at home if you have a MIDI keyboard. I'm going to use my Lindstrom up for this. But um, if you go to the last, and you really, you, by the way, you didn't really, really didn't miss much. I was about done anyway. Uh, so, um, so um, in the chord, in the analyzer service, the chord analyzer service, we have a domain object called music chord, and that domain object is automatically serialized, deserialized with the Spring libraries uh, to, to to bring things up and down. Um, and then here's the actual uh, service, and um, you know for the uh, the analyze service. So we, uh, we use annotation to map an endpoint to an actual um, method. And then here's the notes. Um, and so we're mapping that. Automatically happens. And then um, the app deploy cycle. Oh, it's, it's, gosh, it's so simple. You just do a Maven clean install every time you change something. And then you, you literally just do a CF push, just like an easy button and then it pushes it up into the cloud, and that's it. I mean, just, that's, that, that's it. And then this is the web services um, um, control panel. Uh, if you want to do a, 
a, a spring project, spring boot, whatever you use, the spring initializer site. It's start.spring.io. And then here's what I really want to show you, and that is, um, so we've got this instrument, uh, we've got this, uh, this web client that I've created just to be able to show that not only can CounterPoint service access the Cord Analyzer service, but also um, we're going to access it from another web client. So here we go. Um, uh, so there's the Cord Analyzer service. There's the website. You can do this at home if you'd like. Just get a get a MIDI keyboard. And now notes are going to come directly from here using the Web MIDI API. The cord that you see is going to come after being after that web service is called and then parsed. So here we go. I hope this works. I'm going to play a, a little Bach prelude for you. But I'm going to use a different uh, I'm not going to use the the applause. I'm going to use the grand piano. The applause comes later, right? Is it showing the chords? Yeah. Does she come with the hook to take me off the stage? If she does, let me know. That's my presentation. Thank you so much for being. Thank you. Thank you.